Hello, we are GDJC and today we will be presenting to you the real fan cipher. Firstly, we will be talking about the background and context of the cipher. A real fan cipher is a type of transposition cipher that rearranges the order of the letters in a message in a quick and convenient way. It was first used by the ancient Greeks to encrypt and send messages using a device called the sky tally. The ancient Greeks and the Spartans in particular are said to have used this cipher to encrypt messages as a form of communication during military campaigns. The Skytali is a device which comprises of a cylinder and a piece of parchment. The parchment is wrapped around the cylinder and the message to be encrypted is written on it. So when the parchment is uncoiled, the letters of the plain text message will be rearranged. The diameter of the cylinder is the key for the encryption and decryption of the message, as it determines how the letters in the plain text message will be rearranged. The recipient of the encrypted message then wraps the parchment around a cylinder of the same size in order to read the message. For this example, the message says, I solemnly swear that I am up to no good. After the use of the Skytali, the 4 rail fan cipher encryption algorithm was developed. Similar to the diameter of the cylinder in the Skytali machine, the number of rows of the rail fan cipher encryption is the key used for encrypting and decrypting the secret message. Thus, the number of rows used to break up the message serves as the encryption key, which determines how the letters of the plain text message will be rearranged. When using the 4 row real fan cipher, the spaces in the original message may be removed first or not. The characters will then be written in columns with 4 rows, which resembles the real of a fence. At that time, it was better for them to include the spaces in the original message so as to make the recovery of their plain text meaningful after decryption. To fill in the remaining spaces at the end of the fence to complete it, random letters are added, and this is called padding. Today, the real fan cipher has been developed even further. It now works by writing the message on alternate lines in a zigzag pattern across the page, with the spaces removed. The encrypted message is then obtained by reading off the letters row by row, from the top to the bottom. Now, we will be giving a detailed explanation on how the real fan cipher works today. To encrypt a message using the real fan cipher, the message to be encrypted is written in zigzag lines across the page and then read off row by row from the top to the bottom. Firstly, a key is needed as it is what determines the number of rows you will have. The letters of the plain text are then written diagonally downwards to the right until the number of rows is reached. After that, you continue by writing the letters diagonally upwards until you reach the first row again. This goes on until you reach the end of the plain text. At the end of the message, nouns are added as not all messages are the right length. The nouns act as placeholders and this allows the message to fit neatly into the grid. After the plain text is written on the grid, it should end on the bottom row. This ensures that the number of letters on the top row and bottom row are the same. It is not actually necessary, but it does make the description process much easier with this layout. For the plain text, Hello, my name is Glenn. With a key of 3, we get the encryption process shown below. Two nouns are added at the end of the message to make it the right length. The cipher text is then read off row by row to get. Next, we will move on to decrypting the cipher. This requires us to reconstruct the grid which was used to encrypt the message. First, we start by drawing the grid with the number of rows specified by the key and the same number of columns as the number of alphabets in the encrypted message. Then, the first letter of the encrypted message is placed in the top left square of the grid with dashes being placed diagonally downwards to the right which will be replaced by letters afterwards. After reaching the bottom row, you continue by placing dashes diagonally outwards and when the top row is reached, you place the next letter of the cipher text. Continue till the end of the row is reached before starting on the next row. 
For this example, the cipher text is encrypted with a key of 3. You start by placing the letter J in the first square. Then, you place dashes diagonally downwards and then diagonally upwards to the right. After you reach the top row, you place the next letter which is D in the square. Continue doing this until the top row is completed and every column is occupied by either a letter or a dash. Next, we continue by replacing the dashes in the next row with the next letters of the cipher text. We will then be able to complete the rest of the rows and read the plain text of the completed grid following the diagonals. For this example, the message says just to read. What makes the real fan cipher better than ciphers like the sawtooth cipher, also known as the scissor cipher, is that there's a variable distance between consecutive letters, done by arranging the letters in a zigzag manner from up to down and then up instead of being arranged in fixed vertical columns. This increases the difficulty of breaking the code. However, there are potential security vulnerabilities. The real fan cipher is easy to apply but insecure in the sense that it is limited by the number of usable keys, especially for short messages as the length of the message has to be at least twice the length of the key for there to be enough movement of letters when encrypting. It can be easily broken via brute force attack as a result. In a real fan cipher, Nouns can be used to identify the end of the line and thus allow the person intercepting the message to be able to make a guess at the key. This can be avoided by replacing the nouns with random letters. Another way to strengthen this cipher is by keeping the spaces in between the words and using them as letters when filling in the table.